All right, how you doing today, boys and girls? We're going to take a look at lesson 3.5, where we write and graph equations of lines. Now, this should be a review from Algebra 1. So let's go ahead and get to this, and I might even show you a couple of tricks that you might not already know. Now, the very first thing that we're going to take a look at are the three different forms that you might see lines written in. The first is slope-intercept form, and that's going to take the form y equals mx plus b. Now, m you should remember, m is going to represent the slope, and b is going to represent the y-intercept. Now, for our next type of equation, we're going to have point-slope form, and that's going to take the form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And again, m is going to represent the slope, and x1, y1 this time, that's going to represent a point. Now, sometimes you might give, be given only one point, and other times you might be given two points, so it's going to really just kind of depend on what information we're given. Now, our last type of form is called standard form, and that's ax plus by equals c. Now, there's a couple things about the letter a. a has to be positive. It must be positive. It cannot be a fraction. So a value has to be positive, can't be a fraction. Now here's a little tidbit that some of you may be aware of, but most people probably aren't. If you, if you take negative a over b, that will give you the slope of that line. Now let's take a look at our first two examples here, find, where we have to find the equation of a line. These two pieces of information, we're given the slope and we're given the y-intercept. So if we have those two pieces of information, we're simply going to write the equation in slope-intercept form. So that's it for example 1. We'd have the equation y equals negative 4x plus 2. Now similarly, for example number 2, we're given the slope and the y-intercept, so we would just simply write that in slope-intercept form. Now there's two ways you could have written this. Either one of those is okay, either 1 7 x minus 3 or just y equals x over 7 minus 3. In either case, make sure that your writing is clear enough so that you don't get mistaken for having the x in the denominator of your fraction. Now, for example 3, this one says, write the equation of a line that has a slope of 4 and goes through the point 5, 4. So let's take a look at the information we're given. We've got a slope of 4, and we've got a point. So these two pieces of information tell us that we should use the point-slope form of the line. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and write that in it, down that information. So I have m equals... 4 and my point x1 y1 is the point 5 4. Now the first thing I want you guys to always do is write down the formula because that's going to help you get it memorized. Go ahead and write down the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. From this point on this is just a simple substitution so make sure that you take your time and substitute everything in the right spots. Go ahead and hit pause and see if you substituted it in correctly. Hopefully you got the same answer I did. y minus 4 equals 4 times the quantity x minus 5. Now, you don't have to put it in slope-intercept form unless the directions specifically ask you to. So you could leave it here and you would be completely done. Now, when it asks us to put our answer in standard form, from there, now we're going to need to go ahead and move some variables around. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So we're going to start off with what we had from before. y minus 4 equals 4 times the quantity x minus 5. We're going to distribute the 4 to both terms. So we'll have 4x minus 20. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. And then what I want to do is move some things around. So I want to move this 4 over first because that needs to be on the other side. So if I add 4 to both sides, we'll end up with 4x minus 16 but I have to have the x term on the other, on the left-hand side. So if I subtract 4x, that's going to give me negative 4x plus y equals negative 16. Now, a lot of people think they're done right here, but wait, we're not. We've got to go one more step because our term in front of the x, that a value, has to be positive. So what we have to do is change the signs of every term in our equation and we do that by multiplying everything through by negative 1. So when we're done we have the equation 4x minus y equals 16. 
Now, onward to example number 5. For 5, there, we're given this information. Write the equation line as a slope of 0 and goes through the point negative 13, 8. So, I know that my slope is 0 and my point is negative 13, 8. There's two ways to do this problem. We're going to do it the long way first, and then I'll show you the short way second. So, the pieces of information I'm given first, I've got slope of 0, so that's my m, and my point is going to be negative 13, 8, so that's my x1, y1. Now, if I have a point and a slope, I want to go ahead and use point slope form. So, again, write down the formula, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Next, we're going to make sure that we substitute in carefully. We'll have y minus 8 equals our slope is 0, so that's going to go in for m x minus, and then I have negative 13. Now y minus 8 on the left, but on the right hand side, I've got 0 times, and then x plus 13. Well wait, 0 times any quantity will give me 0, so that's just going to be y minus 8 equals 0. If I were to solve that for y, I would just get y equals 8. So that's the equation of the line right there, y equals 8. But here's what I want you to take a look at. What's the y-coordinate that we are given? That's right, it's y equals 8. So if you have a line that has a slope of 0, it's very simply just going to be the y-coordinate for the point that goes through that line. So anytime you have a slope of 0, just look at the y-coordinate and write y equals then that coordinate. That's all there is to number 5. All right, so that was the shortcut. Now let's take a look at example six. This one is going to be another one that should be very, very straightforward. First thing you should be able to identify is the y-intercept because we can look at this picture and we can pick that off very, very easily. The y-intercept is going to be located right here. So your y-intercept is going to be four. Now my slope, I'm going to use the two points that I'm given and I can see here and I'm going to count this and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has a rise of six. And my run, one, two, three. So I go three, but since I moved to the left, I have to remember, make sure that it's negative. So I've got a rise of six and a run of negative three. So when I reduce that, six over negative three, that just gives me negative 2. So when I write my equation, I'm just going to have y equals negative 2x plus 4. And we're done and moving on to example 7. Now 7 and 8 are both going to be a little bit more involved because we're going to have to do a few more things here. First thing we have to do, we've got to write an equation of a line that goes through this point, negative 1, 1, and is parallel to y equals 2x plus 3. Now here's how I want you guys to set it up. I want you to write down all of this information m equals 2 comes from my original line because that they tell us y equals 2x plus 3 that's written in slope intercept form and I know that my slope is 2 now the slope that I want the key word here is parallel since I want the equation line that goes through a point that's parallel to that parallel lines have the same slopes so the slope that I want is also going to be 2 now the point that we're given is through the point negative 1 1 now I'm going to take all of this information, I have the slope that I want and I have a point, so I'm simply just going to use point slope form to help me solve this problem. Now if you did all of your substituting correctly and you simplified the way you should, you should end up with the same thing I did at the very end. y minus 1 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 1. Now here's where you have to be really careful when you make your substitution up on the second line make sure that when you do x minus negative 1 that that then turns into x plus 1 because you're not going to see it written the way you, it's there in the second line. You always want to write it with um, the way that's written in the third line. So that's it for example 7. If you think you got this down, try example 8 on your own because it's the same idea but with perpendicular line. So set up your slope, the slope that you want, use your point and go through point slope form and see if you can determine what the equation of that line would be. Now, how did you do setting it up? I want to make sure that you have the setup right first before you even continue on, because if your setup is not right, then the rest of it's definitely going to be wrong. Now, the slope that you want, that's where you have to be really careful. The slope that you want is 1 half, because that's the negative reciprocal of the slope that you're given, negative 2. Because remember, perpendicular lines, if you 
multiply them together, their slope or their product is going to be negative 1. So negative 2 times 1 half gives us that. That's why the slope that I want is going to be positive 1 half. Now, once all that information is correct, go ahead and hit pause and see if you can go ahead and do the rest of the problem totally on your own. So how did you do? Hopefully, your work and my work look identical. I want you to make sure that you show every step the same way, including writing down the formula. Don't get lazy on that. Now we've got two other examples to go, so let's go ahead and bust those ones out. Now, for example nine, you should recognize this as being in standard form. Anytime you have an equation in standard form, you can graph using intercepts. Now for those of you who might forget what that looks like, what you're gonna do is take the first term, 3x, and you're gonna set that equal to 12. When you solve for that, you'll get x equals 4. So this is going to be the point for 0. Now we're going to do the same thing for y. We're going to take 4y and set that equal to 12 because essentially what we're doing is we're letting x be 0. So when we divide both sides by 4, we get x equals 3. So this is where you have to be careful. Make sure you write the coordinate correctly. So that's going to be the coordinate 0, 3. So those are the two points that I need. You only need to have two points to draw a line. So let's go ahead and get those plotted and then draw the line through them. So we've got our two points, 4, 0 and 0, 3 plotted. And that's all we needed to do. Now, technical point, make sure when you connect those two points and you draw the lines, be sure to extend the lines past and include arrows on the end of your lines. All right, because if you don't have those on there, your teacher might take off for that. Now we're at our final example here, number 10. So if you've made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back because I think by now you've got all this stuff down and it should totally be a review for you. Now, we've got to find, write the equation line that goes through these two points, 0, 5, and 8, negative 10 in slope-intercept form, point-slope form, and standard form. So, the very first thing that we're going to do, if we have two points, we've got to find what the slope is. So. Let's go ahead and find a slope. Now, a slope is going to be negative 10 minus 5 over 8 minus 0. So we end up with negative 15 over 8. So our slope is negative 15 over 8. Now, the one that we're going to get after first is we're going to actually, since we have two points and a slope, we're going to go ahead and use point-slope form. And for point-slope form, because I already have the slope, what I'm going to do is take a look at my two points. I'm going to pick the point 0, 5. So what I want you to do is pick the point 0, 5, use the slope, and go ahead and see if you can determine the equation of the line in point-slope form using that. So how would you do with it? Hopefully you got the same answer that I did in point-slope form using the point 0, 5. Now, let's take a look at what we've got here, and we're going to go ahead and actually we're going to go after slope-intercept form next. So. Let's see how we would do that. Now we got to take a look at slope intercept form. I want to first take a look at the answer I got in point slope form. I had y minus 5 equals negative 15 over 8x. So slope intercept form basically just means you have to solve for y. So if I solve for y, I'll just have y equals negative 15 over 8x. Then I have to add 5 to both sides. And that's it. You're done. Yes, it really was that easy. Now, the last thing that we have to do is go ahead and put it in standard form. So standard form is going to be our last one. Now, remember, standard form is going to take the form ax plus by equals c. So we've got to get all the variables on the left-hand side and the constant over on the right-hand side. Now, if I take a look at what I had in slope-intercept form, the y equals negative 15 8 over 8x plus 5, we're going to start with that. Now there's a couple different ways you can go with this. For me, I just I don't like fractions. And that's actually one of the pieces for our standard form. The A value cannot be a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the fraction by multiplying every term through by 8. So the first term, 8 times y, would just give me 8y. When I multiply negative 15 over 8x by 8, all I'm going to have left is negative 15x. And then don't forget the last term, 5 times 8, I would end up with 40. Now I have to take the negative 15x term and move that to the other side. So I would have 15x plus 8y 
equals 40. So let me just double check and make sure that meets all the criteria that I need for standard form. Is the x term positive? Yes. Is the x term not a fraction? Yes. So I've taken the two requirements that I needed for standard form, and they're satisfied. My constants over on the other side, x and y are on the left side. So we're good to go. That's it. But wait a second. What if we didn't pick the point 0 0.05? What if we actually use the other point, 8, negative 10? How different would that look? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're going to go ahead and do that and see how our answers look compared to this one. So the standard form and slope intercept form, both of those, it doesn't matter which point you start with. You can use either one to help you determine the slope or the intercept form of a line or the standard form of a line. But if you're going to use the point slope formula, that formula, you're going to have a little bit different equation depending on which point you use. So that's it for this one. That's a lot of stuff, but it should all be reviewed from Algebra 1. So we'll practice some of these in class. Make sure you guys have these down solidly, and I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.